I'll get in the water pretty quick. Good morning. I'm going to be fishing the Hawkesbury region today with some new products from Daiwa. We've got the new TD Zero rods. Uh, I used the old rods, I love them. The new ones are a uh, step up again, so I'm really excited to use those. The new Steez Soft Shell Vibes, which I'll be throwing around for some Jewfish. Hopefully they're on the chew today. And also some new uh, Crosslink Fluorocarbon from Daiwa, which is a pretty exciting product and not just your average fluorocarbon. Yeah, I just got them out of the car. I always start the day with an FG knot. If the fishing's intense and I, I get broken off at some stage or bitten off, then I might change the knot in the field with something a little faster. But the FG knot's a great way to start the day. It's such a reliable knot. Tying knots on the boat in the middle of winter when it's a cold morning is not an easy task. I think it's a task better done in front of a log fire with a nice uh, Tasmanian whiskey. So uh, my suggestion is do this at night uh, in a warm place rather than on the boat. Yeah, people often ask me how long a leader I like to run. In the case of this FG knot I've just tied, I've wound the FG knot up within a couple of inches of the tip of the rod and I'm holding my fluorocarbon spool just shy of the reel. I'm going to cut it there so that I know that my FG knot is not on the reel when I'm casting lures because that'll cost me distance. So that's how long my leader is, as long as it can be without getting the knot on the reel. Wow, my first view of the uh, Stees soft shell vibe. And this is like Christmas for me, opening, uh, opening up new presents. Uh, I'm pretty excited to be throwing this for Jewfish today. These are BKK fangs, which are a really reliable, great hook for uh, the sort of fishing I, I do for Jewfish. Because we're using reasonably small lures here for a fish that can be quite big, so you, you really need good hardware. We'll get fishing, eh? So I think we've all heard the saying that if you find the bait, you find the fish. It's very true. I'm just working my way down towards Broken Bay in the Hawkesbury area and I just stumbled across a little bit of bait. I'm just going to run my electric motor around and just see if I can find a jewfish or something around that bait that's worth dropping down to. The beauty of running your sounder and your electric motor and using a vibe like these Steve's, uh, these Steve's soft shells is I can pretty much drop them straight down and teabag them. And that's how I get a lot of my fish using the sounder, especially things like jewfish. So if I'm dropping the vibe straight down and teabagging it up and down, I can do that for either side of the boat. But if I have a tide that's running a particular direction, Fish face into the current for the most part. When you go to a river and see a trout swimming in the current, it's always facing into the current. And it's the same in the salt water. So I want to present my lure either coming down with the current or coming across diagonally at 45 across the current. What I don't want to do is bring my lure up uh, against the current. So I'm basically presenting the lure coming up against the tail of the fish rather than the fish's face. Oh, yep. Oh, I came up the front, marked, uh, marked that fish on the sounder, and he took it first drop on the bottom. And there's your little Dewey. So when I have a fish on the leader, I'm quite a fan of leadering fish into the net, as opposed to just poking the net at them. And I, I do use a net that doesn't hurt the fish, so it's, uh, it's just easy for me to leader them in, but the one thing you must do, if you're gonna put your rod upright like this in a rod holder, undo your bail arm first before you go to leader the fish. That way, if the fish suddenly power dives, you don't snap the tip off your rod. <laughs> They're fun at any size, really. <laughs> um. Okay, let me... 
Nice. I reckon that's sight fishing. <laughs> Using the sounder to do it, but it's as good as sight fishing just to be able to pin a fish on your sounder and drop something like that vibe straight on its nose, bang. As soon as I got that vibe down there, he smashed it. I knew they looked good in the water, but the fish obviously thought so too. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to drop this vibe just slightly up current so that by the time it sinks down, it's on top of these fish that I'm marking on the sounder. I'm also, as that lure gets closer to the bottom, going to be very, very careful to pay attention to my line as it's sinking to make sure it doesn't suddenly take off with a fish biting it on the drop. Once it's on the bottom, I'm just going to teabag it right where those fish were marking and see if we can get a bite. just feathering the line down too. It's really important to just feather it down so you can maintain some sort of control if a fish bites it. I've got my sounder set to chirp. I'm running a medium chirp here, along with my standard structure scan, and I can see my lure is within a foot of the bottom. Uh, in fact, about half a foot from the bottom. The sensitivity on chirp is really good for seeing where your lure is located. There he is, got him. <laughs> I don't think this is a jewfish. Well, that one got off. The first fish actually sideswiped this vibe and missed it. And then the second fish looks like it's done the same. <laughs> so we'll take that scale off. And we'll go back, see if we can hook him in the mouth. Oh shit! <laughs> What's that caught on? <laughs> I think I tip wrapped that. Hang on. Oh, don't break the rod. <laughs> so a bit of danger there. I was feathering the line down and a fish hit so hard on the drop on this vibe that I ended up with a tip wrap, but I managed to undo it. And uh, all's, all's well that ends well. Another little school jewfish on the soft shell vibe. Better get him back in the water. One thing I've noticed with this soft vibe is just how little movement you need to make in the lure to actually get some great action out of it. Now in the case of these fish here at the moment, they're not large dewfish, they're fairly small. And I think if I was to be using huge sweeps of the rod and really big lifts, I'd probably have less chance of getting these fish to, uh, to connect with the lure. I'm actually really wafting it in their face, just quite subtly. There's just so much action in this vibe that uh, it makes it so much easier to have a variety of retrieves available to you rather than having to always use more aggressive sweeps to get the tail to move or to get the vibe to actually impart action. Yep. Oh. Oh.
Since all the rain in the Sydney region, there's been quite considerable flooding over the last few years. And that's a great thing for Mulloway. A lot of people think Mulloway spawn every year and you know they produce offspring every year, but the science is pretty clear that they actually only have good recruitment when there's flooding events. So there's a lot more smaller dewfish around at the moment. Um, the Mulloway have, have really uh, managed to uh, have a couple of good years, but it does mean that in drought times, there's almost no recruitment. I am on. <laughs> oh, no, I'm off <laughs> on the drop. Um, so there's almost no recruitment um, in the drought years. So it's really important we look after our Mulloway stocks because they're not like a lot of other fish. They don't just have a, a boom, uh, boom sort of time to spawn every year. It doesn't work that way. I don't think it can be overstated how how good this technology is of these monocoque bodies and the fact that you're able to put such a rigid body around those larger gears that are in there you don't get that body flex that you get from two-piece construction and it means I can use a smaller lighter reel for this sort of job that in the past I would have been up at least a size just to have the gearing that can handle the kind of drags I want to run on bigger jewfish or kingfish that sort of thing. I found myself using lighter and lighter reels and smaller and smaller reels over the years thanks to Dyla's technology so it certainly makes for longer casts and a more pleasant fishing experience too you know this is so light. Yeah. So, uh, Nice little variety here. Gee, they'd be wonderful in the impoundments too. Quite a versatile range of colours. So I can imagine using these in fresh and salt, no problem at all. Well, this is the last cast. And despite some challenging conditions earlier and flooding waters and all that sort of jazz, we've managed to target some Jewfish and catch them successfully on these vibes. I absolutely love these lures. The new TD Zero rods, the Revelry Reel, just what a great match. And uh, despite only having a small amount of water we could really fish, been successful, so great morning. <laughs>